morning, I want to talk to us about something that a lot of us struggle with every day in our daily lives. Confidence. You know, some people go through life seemingly missing every single pothole. <laughs> having sunshine in their lives day in and day out. Seems like nothing bad ever happens to them. Seems like everything just always works out their way. But the rest of us seems like we're the ones that get caught in the downpour without the umbrella. We're the ones that get the short end of the stick. We're the ones that if there's a virus going around, we're going to catch it. <laughs> you know, Peanuts used to have a character that walked around with a dark cloud over his head all the time. <clears throat> Sometimes we feel like that. You know, those are the kind of days that have an intense effect on our confidence. They eat away at our self-esteem. Those gray days create rumblings in our soul. And those are the kinds of days that lead us to doubt God's presence in our lives. <coughs> Those are the days that make us shake our fists and go, God, where are you today? Oftentimes those gray days make us look at the folks that we perceive to only have the sunshine and the smooth road and the big umbrella and ask, what do they have that I don't have? Why are they not dealing with the same things that I am? What I want to share with you this morning is that those folks that seem to avoid the downside of life, the ones that always have the umbrella, the ones that never walk under the dark cloud, the ones that seem to always be walking in the sunshine and never stumbling, actually face the exact same things that we do, but they have something that we might be lacking. What they have is a Christian confidence. I'm going to share with you this morning a passage of scripture that I think might help us all grow in Christian confidence. I'm going to go back to Paul's letter to the Romans after a brief detour to Matthew last week. And I want us to listen to the words of this passage scripture this morning. But before I do that, I want you to remember the focus passage from two weeks ago. Romans 8.1, Therefore... <laughs> There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus because through Christ Jesus, the spirit of life has set me free from the law of sin and death. And in remembering that, I want us to hear what Paul had to say later on in that same letter. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him and who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. <coughs> and those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. If you have a highlighter, highlight that in your Bible. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Amen. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, not just the people in the sunshine, but us with the clouds over our head, gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with his son, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charges against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. 
Christ Jesus, who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of God? Shall trouble, or hardship, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written, and this is from Psalms, For your sake we, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. We're not just survivors, folks. We are conquerors. We are conquerors. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither present nor future, nor any powers, high nor death, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. You know, aside from John 3.16, <clears throat> that passage may be the most powerful and the most comforting passage of Scripture for Christians. Because what other verses in Scripture contain more glorious promises than this? What could be more assuring for us to know that as a child of God, everything in our lives is going to work out for good? Before you raise your hand and say, wait a minute, <laughs> I disagree with you there. I want to go into that verse just a little bit more. <coughs> The Greek word that's translated in the phrase work together is the same word that we get our English word synergy from. And that means the ability to take every element in a situation and cause it to cohese and to work together to achieve an effective result. The point of this verse is that God is able to take everything that comes into our life he takes the good and the bad, the exciting and the dull, the pleasurable and the painful, the joyful and the tragic, and somehow, beyond our understanding, puts all those together for our ultimate good. Think about it like this. Let's say we're going to bake a cake. We have all of our ingredients spread out on the counter. Now, if we were to take some of the ingredients and taste them alone, they'd be pretty darn nasty, wouldn't they? Here, take a spoonful of flour, shortening, raw eggs, salt, baking soda. But then there's some things about the cake that are pretty good by themselves. Sugar, frosting, <laughs> vanilla. Somehow God takes all of these raw ingredients and mixes them all together and with his own special recipe bakes this cake that comes out being pretty darn good. 